What if there was a place with all the zip of Nuka Cola? Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4's DLC Nuka World. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show us how to acquire both the Paddle Ball, a rare weapon, and its ammunition. We will also run through its eight modification variations. And of course you will need the Nuka World DLC install to acquire this weapon. Now either before watching this video or after watching this video to balance out the extraordinarily deadly dose of leprosy that you may get from the Paddle Ball, I would suggest you check out a video that I contributed to created by my good friends Michael and Scott at Fudge Muppet, and that video is called The Ideal Fallout New Orleans. It's a big, juicy, theory craft video. You can check it out with the annotation on screen or a link will also be in the description for mobile users. So if you are into Fallout, I think you will be very interested in checking out that video. And it's almost a necessity after experiencing the pure poo that is the paddle ball. So let's get started. First of all, to acquire the paddle ball, we will need to come to the Nuka Cade. I'm sure we're all very familiar with this place by now, but on the Pip-Boy map it can be found right about in the middle of Nuka Town, USA. Once inside, we want to head to the back of the room. Once back here, we will find the Nuka Cade Prize Terminal. And of course, we want to click on it, then go to Spend Tickets, and then go to Prize Level 3. And hopefully here for 500 tickets, you will find the Paddle Ball. If you don't know how to get prize tickets, I do have a full guide on that. Again, I'll put an annotation on screen for those of you who need that guide. So once you have purchased the Paddle Ball, go over over to the giant smiling mouth and out it will come into the trough. And of course we want to pick it up. Now the paddle ball may not be present in the prize redemption terminal. If this is the case you have to wait an entire week until the stock is reset. So that's how you get the paddle ball. Now let's talk about the ammunition for the paddle ball. Now the ammunition for the paddle ball is in fact a bigger bird den than a cave full of birds. So first of all if we go back to the Nuka Cade ticket prize terminal and then click on spend tickets and level 1 prizes. For 50 tickets we will be able to buy one paddle ball string. As you can see on screen there happens to be two in stock at the moment. But they will not always be in stock and if they are not in stock you have to wait an entire in-game week for the stock of the prize terminal to be reset. And personally I had to wait five in-game weeks until these two strings showed up. Which by the way is not acceptable. That is absolutely ridiculous. So when the day comes and you actually get to purchase some of these strings, go over to the smiley mouth and they will quite conveniently roll not into the trough but straight onto the floor. Paddle ball string, a weight of zero and a value of one. There is one other one-off way to get paddle ball string. What we need to do is come to the Grand Chester Mystery Mansion. On the Pip-Boy map it can be found in the very southwestern region of the Nuka World DLC. Once here, out the front, we need to go to the ticket taker a uniquely named Protectron. And quite simply, what you need to do is kill the Ticket Taker. And for reasons completely unbeknownst to myself, the Ticket Taker of a Haunted Mansion happens to be carrying 100 Paddle Ball String. Makes sense, right? Moving on, I just want to quickly touch on the reloading animation, which makes about as much sense as the Ticket Taker carrying the 100 Paddle Ball Strings. As you can see on screen here, when you get to zero ammunition, it reloads by flipping the Paddle Ball. Logic. Now before we check out this incredibly strange weapon, the Paddle Ball, as always I have reduced all of my character special attribute stats to one, I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the Paddle Ball. So first in line of the eight modifications is the Rubber Ball modification. This is the standard mod that it comes with. As we can see the description of the modification is standard. Once the Rubber Ball modification has been added to the Paddle Band, which you won't need to do anyway, it it has a base ballistic damage of 1, it uses the paddle ball string as ammunition, it has a fire rate of 25, a range of 11, an accuracy of 151, a weight of 2 and a value of 10. And as we can see up the top there, paddle ball. So the standard paddle ball is probably, quite literally, the worst weapon in Fallout 4. As we know it has a base ballistic damage of 1 and its damage is not increased by any perks whatsoever. So you will never get its damage above 1 and also if your enemy has any damage resistances, 
they're going to be taking less than one damage per hit. And each time you hit uses a paddle ball string ammunition, which as we know are incredibly rare and very impractical to acquire. The best use for this standard paddle ball variant is to just wrap the string around all of our throats and end it all. Next we're going to be looking at the spiked ball modification for the paddle ball. As we can see spiked ball armor piercing better damage. And once the spiked ball modification has been added to the paddle ball it has a base ballistic damage of 3, it uses the paddle ball string as ammunition, its fire rate is 25, its range is 11, its accuracy is 151, its weight is 2.5 pounds and its value is 14 caps. And up the top we can see spiked paddle ball. So the spiked paddle ball modification increases the damage by 3 times compared to the standard paddle ball. It also has armor piercing capabilities because we wouldn't want anything less than that whole 3 damage hitting our enemy. After getting the lone wanderer perk and the bloody mess perk I did get its damage up to 4. So it's definitely a force to be thrown in the bin. Next we're going to be looking at the bladed paddle ball. As we can see there the bladed ball modification targets bleed, better damage, chance to dismember targets on critical hits. Once the bladed ball modification has been added to the paddle ball we have a base ballistic damage of 3. It still uses the paddle ball string as ammunition, its fire rate is 25, a range of 11, an accuracy of 151, its weight is 3 pounds and its value is 15 caps. Now to be honest although it's still absolute rubbish it's a massive upgrade compared to the previous paddle ball modifications or variants. Although it still only has a base ballistic damage of 3 which can be taken to 4 with the lone wanderer perk and the bloody mess perk, the bleed effect that it applies stacks and it's also around 20 bleed damage over 4 seconds roughly. Now although it's still most certainly not worth using one paddle ball string with every hit with this, again it's about 10 times better than the two previous variants that we've looked at. And that big damage gap entirely consists of that bleed damage. So although it does a bleed and better job than the other modifications, it's still not quite worth it. Moving on to the next one, the electrified ball modification adds electrical damage. Once that has been added to the paddle ball, we will have a base ballistic damage of 1, a base energy damage of 10. It still uses the paddle ball string as ammunition. It has a fire rate of 25. Its range is 11. Its accuracy is 151. Its weight is 3.2 pounds and its value is 20 caps. And as we can see up the top, we now have the electrified paddle ball. Now, first of all, something really, really weird happens when you have the electrified paddle ball equipped. If it's equipped and you turn on your Pip-Boy light, the light will come out of your character's right hand and not out of the Pip-Boy face, which is on your character's left hand. As we can see here, I have the electrified paddle ball equipped and the beam of light is coming out of my character's right hand and not the Pip-Boy itself. I don't know why this happens, but I do know that it only happens with the electrified paddle ball and none of the other seven variations. So as shocking as that is, let's talk about it in action. Its electrical damage can be increased by the bloody mess perk and the lone wanderer perk. As far as I can tell, none of the other damage increasing perks will actually increase the damage of the electrified paddle ball. Its ballistic damage, I was not able to increase it at all. So in my eyes, this is actually worse than the bladed paddle ball. Although it does more damage instantly, the bladed paddle ball did damage over time, which ended up being more than this dishes out per hit. It's also annoying when you're in a dark area because if you turn your Pip-Boy light on, it doesn't light the area around you. It just has a beam of light like shooting behind you. And even though the light is coming out, again, it does not illuminate the room whatsoever when you are in first person view. So that can get really annoying. And with all that said, it's still definitely not worth using one paddle ball string ammunition <laughs> per hit. Next, we're going to be moving on to the fireball modification for the paddle ball. As we can see there, fireball adds fire damage. So once we've done that, it has a base ballistic damage of 1, a base energy damage of 15. It still uses the paddle ball string as ammunition. Its fire rate is 25, its range is 11, its accuracy is 151, its weight is 3.2 pounds and its value is 25 caps. And as we can see up the top there, we now have the flaming paddle ball. Now the flaming paddle ball, I found to be a little bit of a tricky one to figure out. With the Lone Wanderer perk and the Bloody Mess perk, I could get its damage up to 21 fire damage, although its ballistic damage did not increase at all and remained at 1. Now despite having a combined total hitting power of 22 with the two powers combined after being fully perked out, most of the time I found the flaming paddle ball to instantly one-shot any enemy I was fighting with. Enemies that had much, much more health than 22 health. I don't know why this is. I don't know if it's just tripping out, if it's bugged, if it's glitched, or if there's some hidden mechanics to the flaming paddle ball modification. On the face of its base stats, again, it's definitely not worth the one paddle ball string per 
per shot. And to be honest, even with this amazing hidden ability to pretty much wreck anything in one go that you hit, it's still probably not worth the one battle ball string per hit. But if you were going to use any of the modifications, this is definitely a contender, and it's a great lot of fun watching enemies explode into bloody piles. Well, let's be honest, all piles are bloody. Now we're going to be moving on to the weaponized Nuka Cola variant of the Puddle Ball, and to create these modifications, you will need to have had found the Project Cobalt Schematics. If you don't know how to find the Project Cobalt Schematics, I would direct you and highly suggest that you click on the link on screen. This is a link to a video I've already done in which I do an entire walkthrough guide of how to acquire the Project Cobalt Schematics. And if you're on mobile and can't see it, go into the description and click on the Thirst Zapper Weapon Guide link, as the start of that video does contain the walkthrough guide of how to acquire the Project Cobalt Schematics. So assuming you have got that and unlocked the ability to create weaponized Nuka-Cola ammunition at the Chemistry Station, then let's now move on. So first up we have the weaponized Nuka-Cola Ball modification for the Paddle Ball. As we can see, the description there adds a small explosion on impact. And in the materials required to create this modification, we can see down the bottom we need five weaponized Nuka-Cola ammo. Again, once you get the Project Cobalt Schematics, you can create this ammunition at a chemistry bench. So once we have added that modification to the Paddle Ball, it has a base ballistic damage of one. Don't worry, there is some hidden damage. It uses the Paddle Ball String as ammunition still. Its fire rate is 25, its range is 11, its accuracy is 151, its weight is 3.5 pounds, and its value is 30 caps. And as we can see up the top, we now have the Nuka Cola Paddle Ball. Now, first of all, despite only displaying a base ballistic damage of one, it does actually do 10 explosive damage or some kind of damage. Again, because it's not actually put into the weapon description, I don't know what kind of damage it actually is. But it does appear to completely ignore damage resistance of enemies, so that is handy, although that extra 10 damage did not seem to vary whatsoever, even when I had every single damage increasing perk in the game, so I suppose that is a trade-off for ignoring damage resistances. Now in terms of aesthetics, when a target is hit by the Nuka-Cola Paddle Ball, there is an explosion which mimics that of the weaponized Nuka-Cola modification of the Thirst Zapper. As you can see, it's a big brown cloud of Nuka-Cola, adding the fizz to your foe's days. And as fan fizzling tastic as that is, I still would not suggest you use your paddle ball strings on this modification. Next, we're moving on to the weaponized Nuka-Cola Cherry Ball modification for the paddle ball. As we can see, there adds explosion on impact. Very descriptive descriptions here. Now, down the bottom of the required materials, to create this modification, we can see we have the weaponized Nuka Cherry Ammo. We will need five of those. Again, you will need the Project Cobalt Schematics to create these at a chemistry station. Now, once the weaponized Nuka Cola Cherry Ball modification has been added to the Paddle Ball, it has a base ballistic damage of one. Don't worry, yes, there are some hidden damages in there. It still uses the Paddle Ball String as ammunition. It has a fire rate of 25, its range is 11, its accuracy is 151, its weight is 3.5 pounds, and its value is 40 cap. And as we can see up the top there, we end up with the Nuka Cola Cherry Paddle Ball. Now again, it's ballistic damage and it's hidden damage I could not increase despite having all of the damage increasing perks active. But again, its damages did appear to completely ignore enemies damage resistances. So again, that is the trade-off for not being able to increase the damage, although it's not worth it. Now its hidden damage appears to be 25, between 22 and 27, so I'm gonna sit on 25. It can get a little tough when I'm literally measuring enemies' health bars with a ruler. But let's say it's 25. So basically what we're doing is a combined damage of 26. And aesthetically, when an enemy is hit with the Nuka Cola Cherry Paddle Ball, upon impact there is a bedazzling explosion, which mimics that of the weaponized Nuka Cola Cherry modification for the Thirst Zapper. And although that's cherry good, it's still not worth burning the Paddle Ball string on. Now we're going to be looking at the eighth and final modification for the Paddle Ball in in Fallout 4. This is granted by the weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum Ball modification for the Paddle Ball. As we can see, once again, it has a very detailed and in-depth description of what it does. Adds large explosion on impact. And as we can see at the bottom of the required materials list, we have the weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum Ammo, which we will need five of to create this modification. And again, you will need the Project Cobalt Schematics to be able to craft the weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum Ammunition at a chemistry station before you can create this modification for the Paddle Ball. So once the weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum Ball modification has been added to the Paddle Ball, we have a base ballistic damage of one again
again, there's hidden damage. It still uses the paddle ball string as ammunition. Its fire rate is 25, its range is 11, its accuracy is 151, its weight is 3.5 pounds, and its value is 50 caps. And as we can see up the top there, Nuka Cola Quantum Paddle Ball, and for whatever reason, this one has the description underneath it, which is adds large explosion on impact. Great, very helpful. Now once again, straight out of the gate, I was unable to increase any of its damages, despite having every single damage increasing perk active. And again, despite the enemy's damage resistance, the Nuka Cola Quantum Paddle Ball did exactly the same damage to each and every enemy with each and every hit. So yes, it ignores damage resistance just like the other weaponized Nuka Cola variants. Now its hidden damage is 50, or very close to 50. Let's just say 50 because it's a nice round number. Then it has its base ballistic damage of one. So with its damages combined, you will be doing 51 damage per paddle ball boink, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Now besides the possibility that the flaming paddle ball does these secret one-shot kill things, the Nuka Cola Quantum Paddle Ball variation is the best one. Now just because it's the best of eight doesn't mean it's good. Again, we're doing 51 damage per hit. Each hit also consumes an ammunition, which as we know is incredibly rare and an absolute pain in the ass to acquire. So again, although it's the best modification, it's still not a good weapon at all. Not only is it not good, but it's not practical. And before we move on to a conclusion, for some reason, the Nuka Cola Quantum variant has a star next to it in the Pip-Boy weapon list, the same way that unique or legendary weapons do. I don't know why this is so. Oh, and aesthetically, its explosion animation is a scaled down version of the weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum variant of the first Zapper and that is a scaled down version of the Nuke and Nuke modification for the Fat Man's explosion. So chisel that into some stone and pass it on to the future generations. So all in all, the Paddle Ball. What do we make of the Paddle Ball? For the most part, it's absolute crap. But before we flush it down the toilet, let's just talk about some things. It does seem to have like a 50% chance to stagger the enemy with each hit, which is always good. For some reason, the Paddle Ball counts as a gun. As we know, it takes ammunition and it also has a range and a fire rate. Also, if you notice how the character holds it, it's as if they are holding a pistol. Also, when you assign the weapon to your favorites list, it will show up with the image of a pistol instead of, say, a melee weapon. Now, despite being counted as a gun, none of the damage increasing perks will affect this. Apart from the electrified paddle ball and the flaming paddle ball, whose two energy damages were increased with the Lone Wanderer perk and the Bloody Mess perk, Apart from that, none of the other damages for any of the other variants could be increased in any way despite my character having every single damage increasing perk active. Now the paddle ball damage all round is absolutely abysmal. So to not be able to increase it, it's just making something really bad even worse. Now for some reason, when you hit an enemy with it, a noticeable amount of shards of stone will fly off them and they will also be left with like a black dent on them, regardless of where you hit them as well. Now the weaponized Nuka Cola variants of the Paddle Ball, their little hit things do do explosion damage, as in that explosion animation does actually carry that damage across into enemies near the enemy that you hit, the biggest of which being the Nuka Cola Quantum variant. But again, even with that, ew, who cares? Now there is one situation in which I could imagine this possibly being used. Okay, hear me out here. If you're on a very incredibly serious survival build and you you have super limited carry weight. You could use this as a backup weapon. Now the reason it's a backup weapon is because of its extraordinarily rare ammunition. Again, remember, I had to wait five in-game weeks to be able to buy two of them, okay? Five weeks for two shots. So essentially I waited five weeks to do 102 damage. So that's the reason this is a backup weapon, okay? In this at least hypothetical scenario. Now the Nuka Cola Quantum Paddle Ball has a weight of 3.5 five pounds and the paddle ball string ammunition has at least a face value weight of zero. So if you're on a very serious survival build where weight is a big issue, this might actually work. Now I'm not saying this is a good idea, but this is probably the only way this would ever see any use as like a one-off backup weapon. Apart from that, conclusively, the best use for the paddle ball is if you're in a canoe. 
you can use it as a paddle. Apart from that, just throw it into a fire or never buy it in the first place. You might want to get one as a collectible weapon. Apart from that, I would highly suggest you stay clear of it and just don't worry yourself with it. Luckily for me, I've just spent three days learning the ins and outs of this incredible weapon. So now I'm going to tie all the remaining ammunition into a big long rope and recreate the opening scene from Ghost Ship. So while I'm doing that, here it is, the paddle ball in action. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my guide, more of a warning guide, for the rare weapon, the Paddle Ball, found in Fallout 4's DLC Nuka World. And of course, you will need the Nuka World DLC installed to acquire this weapon. I do hope this video helped you out in some way, and more importantly, I do hope that this video helped you in saving some time. If you did enjoy this video and you would like to see guides similar to this one, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist, where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely, or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. If you plan on punishing your partner with the paddle ball, please feel free to follow me on Twitter and share the pictures there. The link can be found in the description or you can search Camelworks on Twitter. And with all of that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It has been an absolute pleasure having you here with me, experiencing the tediousy of the paddle ball, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.